So I've been an iPhone user for about 12 years at this point, and today I am switching to Android to see if, like the texting bubbles, if the grass is greener on the other side. So the setup was one of the things that I was worried about when switching over to this phone, because I'm so used to Apple and having just all my contacts, my messages backed up on iCloud, but it was actually very simple. All I really needed to do in order to transfer everything was connect a USB-C to lightning cable between the two phones, and then it just kind of did its thing. It transferred all my contacts, all my messages, all my photos. Something that surprised me about the transfer process that I actually really appreciate was that it also downloaded the Play Store equivalents of all the apps that I had on my iPhone. And it wasn't even just like the most popular apps that I have, like Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. It was also obscure apps like the Solitaire game I play, Notion, stuff like that. One thing I will say about this process is that given it was a wired connection, I would have expected it to take a lot less time. Like mine took about an hour and a half to transfer everything, but also I had about 100 gigs of data, so I'm kind of just nitpicking at this point. Then after the initial setup, seeing all the different customization options that I had available to me was really cool to see, like changing the grid layout, all the lock screen customizations, and even being able to change how the volume slider looks, like that was really cool. Another customization option that I appreciate is the, all the different options for the always on display, just being able to see everything that you want to see and nothing that you don't want to see. One thing I do think is better about the iOS design is the lock screen widgets. I think they honestly just look a little bit cleaner in my opinion, but then once you go to the home screen and you see all the widgets that you put on your home screen, like the weather, I think that is a lot cleaner than it is on iOS. Onto the phone that I picked, I switched to the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and there are a lot of different things I like about the design of this phone. For starters, the flat display is new to the Ultra line this year instead of having the curved display. I honestly don't know how much of a big difference this would have made to me personally. I only really liked it like when it first came out, like around the S6 and S7 time, but over time it was like, eh, it's kind of a gimmick, I don't really like it that much. Like, I don't think I would have hated it on this phone, I just don't think I would have been able to see the benefit of it. This is also my first phone with an in-screen fingerprint reader, and honestly, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this. Back when I had an iPhone 6S in like 2017, Touch ID never really seemed to work for me. Like, it would work for like the first few weeks, but then after that, it would just never work. So I was a little skeptical going into it. I was someone who preferred Face ID. But not only does this fingerprint reader work for me, it is... Okay, that, that's a bad example. It didn't match this time. <laughs> but not only does this fingerprint reader work for me, it works surprisingly fast. I also really like the titanium design. I think it looks really nice. I know that Apple just added it to the iPhone 15 Pro, so you can say that they copied them. But at the end of the day, who really cares? It's a nice design. I like it. I think it looks really clean personally. One of the features that I really like, even though I don't know for sure how often I will use it, is the inclusion of the S Pen. Like using my phone to take notes is not something I can really see myself doing a lot in the future, but what I can see myself using the S Pen a lot for is using it as a remote shutter for the camera app. Like that's a really cool feature, I really like it. That's actually something I was using a lot when I was testing out the camera so that I could use the rear camera to take selfies that are higher quality. And speaking of the camera, the quality on this camera is really, really good. In my opinion, the colors on the main lens look really good. I think outdoor shots look phenomenal. Even using some of the digital zoom past the 10X is surprisingly good. I took a couple pictures right here. One of them is 1x and then the other one is about 50x where I was standing in the exact same spot. And I'm kind of shocked at how decent the picture looked at the 50x. I was a little underwhelmed with the selfie camera, but then also at the same time, I've never really been that impressed with the selfie camera on any phone. And it is serviceable enough. However, if I'm ever in a situation where I want like the highest quality selfie, I will more than likely just flip the phone around and take out the S Pen so I could use the S Pen as a remote. Accessory wise, the two that I switched over to were the Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro 2 and the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. First off with the Galaxy Buds, I hate these things so much. My opinion on the audio quality, I'm not an audiophile or anything, but I think it's about on par with the AirPod Pros. The AirPod Pros might be a little bit better. And honestly, I do like the design and the different color options that they have available. Like I went with the Bora Purple. I think it looks really clean. But beyond that point, I don't really have any more positives for it. And the negatives are pretty negative. 
The touch controls on the side of the earbuds for like play pause and like noise cancellation, while they are nice, are super sensitive and it can be so annoying to use. It's like I just go to readjust the fit of them and I will accidentally play or pause whatever I'm watching and then I will maybe just like turn my head if I'm like in like a recliner or something and it will play or pause whatever I'm watching or listening to. And like, I know that I have the option to just disable the controls in the settings, but they're a feature meant for convenience and I like the feature. I just think its implementation is terrible. And as silly as some people think AirPods look with the giant stem sticking out of your ears, the way that they implement their control for play and pause and then also noise cancellation is a lot better because all you do is pinch the stems or you hold and pinch depending on what you're trying to do and it never gets accidentally triggered. I don't think I've ever had it do it by accident. Like other small gripes I have is that the auto ear detection is really not that great. Like it will keep playing when it's in the case and even if you just open it for a second, it will connect to your earbuds and act like they're in your ears. I don't like that. I want it to auto detect when they're in my ears, not when they're in the case open. And then another thing, I was able to hear myself breathing in the transparency mode. I think their transparency mode is a lot worse than Apple's. Like I also have a pair of XM5 over ear headphones and the transparency mode isn't perfect on them, but it's not distracting either. The only reason I've been using the Galaxy Buds over the AirPods recently has been out of convenience and not wanting to pay for the apps that unlock AirPod functionality. But honestly, moving forward, I might just buy the apps because I prefer the AirPods a lot. And then for the watch, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, honestly, it was going to be very hard for me to be disappointed by this thing because honestly, all I ever use my watch for is notifications and alarms. The one tiny issue that I have with the Galaxy Watch is that you have to download some of the watch faces that are available for it. Uh, while on the Apple Watch, I've never had to do that, or at least if I had to, I just never noticed it. But also, that's something I usually only ever set up once and then never really touch again. I only really ever would change the color or like the different apps that are on the watch face. But other than that, I usually never touch it. So it's basically a non-issue for me. But overall, my experience with the watch so far has been pretty positive. I can't really complain. But my overall thoughts since switching to Android has been pretty positive. I will say I was expecting the jump between the two phones to feel way more dramatic. But in reality, it didn't change that much for me personally. There are a few features that I am missing that I did use regularly on my iPhone, like iMessage and AirDrop, but honestly, I found a few alternatives to it, so it doesn't really make a huge difference to me. For iMessage, uh, before I was just having a Google Messages tab opened on my computer, but then I also found an app on the App Store for it, uh, so that really came in handy for me. It still supports SMS and RCS messages, so it works just as if I was using an iPhone on iMessage for the most part. I do wish Beeper Mini wasn't taken down by Apple or that Apple would make iMessage for Android just so I could have that seamless connection between all my devices like on my phone, my laptop, and my iPad. But at the same time, it didn't make as big of a difference to me as I was expecting it to. And then for AirDrop, I found an app for macOS called Neardrop, which basically replicates what AirDrop does except using Android. And honestly, no complaints about it whatsoever. The only difference is that you have to approve the item that you're being airdropped, but I'm gonna look at the notification anyways on my laptop. It doesn't really matter. It only works for sending from a phone to a computer with the Neardrop app, but that's usually all I use airdrop for anyways. However, the Switch gave me a bit more perspective on something that seems pretty obvious to most people, but when you are like in the Apple walled garden, it's something you don't really understand, I guess. And that's that iOS and Android are both capable to do everything that you need to do. Like messages, calls, social media, cameras, media consumption. They're pretty much the same on both platforms with like a few small differences 
that aren't super game changing. The only major difference I noticed about iOS is how integrated their devices are, like from an iPhone to a MacBook to an iPad, it's all super integrated. And then the main difference I found on Android was the amount of customization and tinkering that you were able to do. So they function pretty much the same and overall you will probably be fine on either platform. Something I wasn't really sure if I was going to do before buying it was if I was gonna keep the phone or not. And honestly, over the week and a half that I've been using it so far, I decided that I am going to keep it. And if you're an iPhone user and you're thinking about switching to Android, or even if you're an Android user that's thinking about switching to iOS, my word of advice, just buy whatever phone you want.